This is the OTB Network. everyone and welcome to a very busy edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We've had exciting stakes racing over this past weekend. The three-year-olds highlighted from coast to coast as well as exciting racing for the older horses as well. We're going to begin at Gulfstream Park where on Saturday they had a tremendous day of racing. We're going to begin with the Bonnie Miss for three-year-olds going a distance of ground. This of course three-year-old grade two fillies. Let's head down to Florida the running of the Bonnie Miss. They're off. Annette's Jet is going to the front from Aspen Tree and Cool Spell at the rail. Pleasant Chimes is close up to the pace. She's fourth and less than a length from the front. Jill Robinell in the gold, very wide at the clubhouse turn. And Sweet Talker just in behind horses as they are tightly bunched to the backstretch. Annette's Jet, Aspen Tree, a three wide Pleasant Chimes and a four wide in the gold. Those four separated by a length to the backstretch. Sweet Talker is just in behind that foursome. Jill Robinell's just outside of her, and Cool Spell shuffled all the way back to seventh and last. Four lengths from first to last, three across the track, six furlongs from the wire. In the 35th, Bonnie Miss Stakes, Pleasant Chimes narrowly in front. In the gold, three deep, and Aspen Tree at the rail, and the three of them quicken up the backstretch, and the undefeated Pleasant Chimes is a neck in front. Then it's a length and a quarter back to Jill Robinell, who's up to fourth. Annette's Jet is at the rail in fifth with Sweet Talker just between horses. Now three by three with a half mile left to run. Cool Spell is the trailer and they head into the far turn. Aspen Tree moves through at the rail. Pleasant Chimes is still there between horses and in the gold is three deep. And Aspen Tree at the three furlongs is a neck in front. Jill Robinell is within two lengths of the lead. Then comes Sweet Talker. Annette's Jet is backed out of it. And Cool Spell is the trailer and they continue to trade punches at the top of the stretch in the Bonnie Miss. In the gold is three deep. At the rail it's Aspen Tree. These two have now put a length on Pleasant Chimes. Pleasant Chimes is backing out of it at the quarter pole. She's about to be joined and passed by Jill Robinell. Then Sweet Talker and Aspen Tree's the one to beat. She comes off the top of the turn now, two lengths in front. In the gold, Jill Robinell is about to claim second, but they'll have to go to catch Aspen Tree. Aspen Tree to the final 16th. In the gold is right back at her, and Jill Robinell to the outside, and now in the gold, and Jill Robinell are one, two. In the gold, Jill Robinell. In the gold, Jill Robinell. I think that Jill Robinell nailed in the gold. It's Jerry Bailey and Pat Day in the Bonnie Miss. Very close. Aspen Tree third. Jill Robinell pulling off a bit of an upset here at 10 to 1. She had been competitive against some pretty nice fillies, getting Jerry Bailey back in the irons to win by a nose over in the gold with Aspen Tree back in the third spot after being involved every step of the way right from the get-go. The winner, Jill Robinell, is a Bay three-year-old daughter of Precocity from Joe Zack by Vilzak, bred in Florida by John Franks. Owned by Robert Brownsdorf and Robert Levine. Trained by Robert Levine and ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. Jill Robin L. Covers the nine furlongs at Gulfstream in one minute, 53 flat. We're going to head back to Gulfstream now and more three-year-old fillies. This time in the stoner side forward gal stakes. Grade two sprint for three-year-old fillies. Let's head back to Florida and the forward gal. They're off. Hot Storm, Little Money Down, Madalena, and Let Go My Echo. All show speed. Bird Harbor joins the fray as well, and they fly early. Bird Harbor, Madalena, Hot Storm, and Little Money Down. Now these four have sprinted clear from Let Go My Echo, Leona's Knight, and Dixie Gemstone at the back of the pack, and they head up the back stretch. And Bird Harbor is the leader early. She's just quicker than Madalena, who's tightly at the rail. These two match strides, Bird Harbor's ahead in front. Madalena, tough trip from there. She races in second, a length and a quarter to Hot Storm in third. Little Money Down is fourth and two and a half lengths off the lead. Let Go My Echo has six lengths to make up. And Long Shots, Dixie Gemstone and Leona's Knight are at the back of the pack. And Madalena moves through and takes the lead. But it's just ahead from Bird Harbor and Hot Storm. The acid test today for the undefeated Madalena. She's only a hard fought head in front. Bird Harbor's alongside and continues to attack. And Hot Storm is three deep. 
three and a half lengths now to Leko Mayeko. Little Money Down has dropped back to fifth, and they run to the top of the stretch. Hot Storm and Madalena. Madalena's just a neck in front. Leko Mayeko is on the move. And here comes Leko Mayeko, another undefeated filly, and she takes over the lead. Madalena's backed out of it. Leko Mayeko in front. Hot Storm. Little Money Down at the rail, and Leko Mayeko has the lead. Little Money Down. Test her to the wire. Leko Mayeko. She's undefeated, too, and Leko Mayeko wins the stoner side. Forward gal by a neck. Little money down, second. Hot storm, third, and Bird Harbor, fourth. Let go my echo, pulling off a bit of an upset here. Five to one over the heavy favorite Madalena, also an undefeated Philly. Both of them heading in here undefeated. Let go my echo, not the one that a lot of people expected to come out undefeated as Madalena involved every step, goes down to defeat, finishing fifth in the field of seven. Let go my echo, a half length winner over Little Money Down, who made good progress on the far turn in a wide position, just getting caught late. Hot storm who had been quite competitive against some pretty good fillies in her most recent efforts, finishing in the third spot after tracking the pace throughout. The winner, Let Go My Echo, is a three-year-old daughter of Menifee from Echo, Echo, Echo by Eastern Echo, bred in Kentucky by Hopewell Investments and owned by Dixiana Farm, trained by Rusty Arnold, and ridden to victory by Javier Castellano. Let Go My Echo covers the seven furlongs at Gulfstream in 123 and 1. Staying with three-year-old sprinters, this time heading into the male division, we've got the grade two swale. Seven furlongs for the three-year-olds. Let's head back down to Florida, the running of the swale. They're up. Fast start for Lost in the Fog, and he jackrabbits away. More Smoke right alongside now in second, and More Smoke is going to out-sprint Lost in the Fog early. Lost in the Fog broke right on type, but now More Smoke is two lengths in front. Lost in the Fog, now second, then comes around the Cape, straight line, and United. What's Up Dude and Santana Strings are next, then Evil Minister and Port Town, and the trailer is up like thunder, and the leader is More Smoke. And More Smoke is very fast, up the back stretch in the Swale Stakes. Lost in the Fog will sit second today, and he's willing for Russell Bays. He's two and a half lengths from More Smoke. Around the Cape is at the rail in third, Santana Strings is fourth and four from the front. Straight line, United, and What's Up Dude all have six lengths to run. Then comes Up Like Thunder to the outside. Port Town is second to last, and the trailer is Evil Minister, and here comes Lost in the Fog to challenge More Smoke. It is More Smoke at the quarter mile marker, just ahead in front of Lost in the Fog, who's on the attack, and Lost in the Fog puts his head in front. Around the Cape is third, and he's two and a half from Lost in the Fog. Then Santana strings, and they run to the final furlong. Lost in the Fog, and Russell Bays now open up. He is two and a half lengths in front of Around the Cape. More smoke, and Santana strings, and Lost in the Fog comes to the final 16th. The Swale Stakes field is left in the wake of Lost in the Fog. He won it by five, and the road to Kentucky is a lot clearer now. Lost in the Fog wins the 20th Swale Stakes. Around the Cape second, and more smoke third. He remains undefeated. In fact, he remains unchallenged. Lost in the Fog just continues to improve. Here, sitting a perfect rating trip, and I think that this was, in fact, the plan. When more smoke went to the lead, they wanted to test Lost in the Fog's ability to rate just a little bit. Russell Bays took him back, made the move at the top of the stretch to kick clear by four and three-quarter lengths over around the Cape, who made up some ground to finish second. More smoke at 69 to one, settling for the third spot after being the pace setter in here. Lost in the Fog has just gone from strength to strength and is now two for two at Gulfstream Park. It has been indicated coming out of this race that the connections are, in fact, looking for the stretch out possibly down at Gulfstream Park in the Florida Derby in a couple of weeks. They've also indicated that they plan on putting up the $6,000 required to make Lost in the Fog eligible for the Triple Crown. Lost in the Fog is a dark bay or brown three-year-old son of Lost Soldier from Cloud Break by Dr. Carter. Bred in Florida by Susan Sieper owned by Harry Aleo and trained by Greg Gilchrist, ridden to victory by his regular rider Russell Bays, Lost in the Fog covers the seven in 122 and one. We're going to continue now with stakes racing action from Gulfstream Park. Now the older horses in action in the Gulfstream Park handicap, a grade two, $300,000 distance event for the older set. Let's head down to Florida, the Gulfstream Park handicap. They're off. Zach Ossity and Classic Endeavor break best. Zach Ossity takes charge. Kennel up, now up into second. Then Pies Prospect, Classic Endeavor, and Contante. Eddington comes away next. Then Seat Gold and the early trailer is collateral damage. 
Zach Ossity makes his way to the rail and he'll set the pace three quarters of a length from Kennel up. Plies Prospect and a four wide classic endeavor. These four could line up to the backstretch. Eddington secures a good striking position. He is fifth and three lengths off the lead. Contante is three lengths behind Eddington, six from the front, then seek gold, and five lengths last to collateral damage as they turn into the backstretch. In the 60th, Gulfstream Park handicapped, Zach Ossity and Kennel Up are one two now, and Zach Ossity is a neck in front. Kennel Up is second by a length and a half, with Pies Prospect and Classic Endeavor together third and fourth. Eddington is just waiting for the go signal from Abar Koa. He is a willing fifth and four lengths off the lead. Then it's three back to Seek Gold and Contante. They're seven from the front, and collateral damage would have to make up 12 lengths and do it in the final half mile as Zacosity goes into the far turn. A neck in front of Kennel Up. Here comes Eddington. He's within a length and three quarters of the lead. Pies Prospect tries to go with Eddington, but Eddington has got the front runners in his sights, and he's doing it well. Contante is still five from the front. Classic Endeavor didn't fire today, then seek gold and collateral damage, and they run to the top of the stretch. Zach Ossity and Eddington three wide, and here comes Eddington. Abar Koa is motionless, and Eddington is taking over the lead, and he's doing it in hand. Pies Prospect chases him in second. Contante is three and a half from the front, and that front is held by Eddington to the final furlong. He leads by two and a half lengths. Pies Prospect is second. Zach Ossity is third, but Eddington is just too good. Eddington is three in front. Pies Prospect is second. Eddington, yes. Eddington won the Gulfstream Park handicap by three. Pies Prospect second, Zach Ossity third, and collateral damage. Finish fourth. Eddington finally getting a little bit of class relief. Now, this is a grade two, and it certainly wasn't a weak field, but Eddington, who's been facing the likes of St. Liam and Roses and May and others, clearly relishing a little bit of a uh, little bit of relief here taking off by three and a quarter lengths over pies prospect zacosity nearly an upset winner last time out was beaten by music toujours and sunshine millions competition getting the third spot after being hustled hard out of the gate early the winner eddington is a chestnut four-year-old son of unbridled from fashion star by chief's crown he was bred in kentucky by carl rosen associates owned by the wilmot stable and trained by mark hennig ridden to victory by ibar coa Eddington covers the mile in 3 sixteenths in 154 and 3. We're going to head back to Gulfstream Park now for grade two competition in the Fountain of Youth Stakes. Obviously the highlight on the card for the three-year-olds going a distance of a mile and an eighth. Let's head down to Florida, the running of the Fountain of Youth. The Fountain of Youth. They're up. High fly sent right out for the front. Bandini away in second. BB Best is third. General John B. and Park Avenue Ball in tight spots at the clubhouse turn. Natural Phenomenon is next. Then Defer and Poppy Chulo. And the early trailer is. As they race around the clubhouse turn, BB Best is the leader. It is BB Best now in front by a length and a half from High Flies, who secures a good running position in second. BB Best is the leader by two lengths. High Fly tracks him in second. General John B. and Bandini. Comfortable third and fourth and two and a half lengths off the lead. Park Avenue ball and long shot natural phenomenon. Only have three and a half to come. Defer is in the black between horses and four from the front. Poppy Chulo is pushed along by Russell Bays. He's got seven lengths to make up. And at the back of the pack is Wild Desert as they're midway on the backstretch. In the 59th Fountain of Youth Stakes and the leader is B.B. Best. B.B. Best into the far turn. He leads by a length and three quarters from Bandini and High Fly. No excuses for those two. They're in striking position. General John B. rides the rail within three lengths of the lead. Then to the outside end, defer. Park Avenue ball still could do it. He's three and a half from the front. Poppy Chulo has got to go. Natural Phenomenon has dropped out of it. Wild Desert is 10 from the front, and they run to the top of the stretch. B.B. Best is confronted by High Fly and Bandini. The three of them line up at the quarter pole. B.B. Best half ahead in front. High Fly is on the attack in second. Bandini tries to go with them, and we have a new leader. It is Jerry Bailey and High Fly off the top of the turn. They're a tight length in front of B.B. Best. Bandini set down for the final furlong. Poppy Chulo within four of High Fly as High Fly reaches for the final 16th of the Fountain of Youth. And now he's two lengths in front. Bandini and BB Best chase him home. High Fly and Bandini. High Fly wins. The 59th Fountain of Youth went to High Fly. He beat Bandini three quarters of a length. BB Best finished third. 
High fly. It looked like a desperate move by this horse to just hold off Bandini, who did uh, level out just a little bit around the 16th pole. Uh, high fly was tiring, but it did appear to me that Bandini was actually improving just a little bit late, getting his mind on business. BB Best, a long shot at almost 20 to 1, holding on for the third spot after being involved in the early pace. Interestingly enough as well, Poppy Chulo, who went off at 6-1 to one as a maiden in this field, did finish a fairly good fourth in front of a couple of horses who are regarded fairly highly as Triple Crown or go were regarded going into this race as Triple Crown candidates. The winner, High Fly, is a chestnut three-year-old son of Atticus from Verbasil by Sloopy. Bred in Kentucky by the Live Oak Stud. He is owned by Live Oak Plantation, trained by Nick Zito. This is his first start for Nick Zito, also his first start. Underwriter Jerry Bailey. High Fly covers the mile and an eighth in the 59th Fountain of Youth in 149 and three. We had a very busy weekend down at Gulfstream. That wraps up Saturday. We've still got Sunday to go, beginning with the very one handicap for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares on the turf. Let's head down to Florida, the running of the very one. They're off. Honey Rider and Vu broke well. Noble Stella and Binya are close up. High Court is tightly between horses, then Royal Sweet Pea and Skip Command. And Briviesca is taken back off the pace. The Galloping Gal is in and amongst horses. In fact, she's all the way up to second. And there goes Galloping Gal to make the lead to the top of the stretch the first time. Normally, she lays last. Today, she's in front at the top of the stretch. It is Galloping Gal, a length and a quarter in front of Binya, who concedes the lead and sits second. Saved by the light and Honey Rider are third and fourth, then to the outside and skip command. Then comes Noble Stella and Vu at the rail. They're all about five from the front. High Court is next. Briviesca has about eight lengths to make up, and she's two in front of Royal Sweet Pea as Galloping Gal with a total change of tactics is three lengths in front with one lap left to go. Galloping Gal is the leader for Edgar Prado. She goes into the clubhouse turn three lengths in front of Binya, who races in second. Honey Rider rides the rail in third, then to the outside of Noble Stella and saved by the light between horses. Skip Command has five lengths to make up. She's a length in front of both Vu and High Court. Briviesca is just outside of those two, about six and a half lengths off the lead. And the trailer is Royal Sweet Pea as they turn into the backstretch. It's Galloping Gal in front. Binya is tracking in second, but Galloping Gal is the dictating front-running speed, and she leads by a length and a quarter. Now Binya, midway on the backstretch, is going to come take her on in second. So Galloping Gal has to quicken to maintain that second, that lead. Briviesca has run all the way up into third for Jerry Bailey. Here's Briviesca within a length and a quarter of the lead. She beats Noble Stella and saved by the light to the far turn. Honey Rider is at the rail, then a length and a half to Vu and High Court. They've got five to come. Royal Sweet Pea and Skip Command, and they run to the top of the stretch. Galloping Gal between horses Binya and a three-wide Briviesca. These three across the track. Honey Rider comes with a nice run. She's within a length and a half of the lead. Then comes Saved by the Light, and they run to the final furlong, and Briviesca has taken over the lead. She'll have to hold off Honey Rider, and she's got a length in front with a final 16th to go. To the outside, Honey Rider is second. Vu is third. Briviesca reaches. Honey Rider attacks. Briviesca, Honey Rider, Honey Rider! Honey Rider just getting up in the shadow of the wire to win by a neck for John Velasquez over Briviesca, a British bred filly under Jerry Bailey, who looked like she had it won. 11 to 1 shot. Vu stepping back up in company to finish in the third spot. The favorite in the field, a lukewarm choice at 3 to 1, was High Court, who uh, was reserved in the early going and made a bit of a move on the turn, but came up flat to finish fourth. The winner, Honey Rider, is a Gray Arone four-year-old daughter of lasting approval from Quando Chiere by a firm. She was bred in Kentucky by the Wimborne Farm, owned by Glen Crest Farm Limited and trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden to victory by stable rider John Velasquez. Honey Rider covers the mile in three-eighths on the turf in 2.11 and 3. We're going to head back to Gulfstream one more time, this time the Gulfstream Park Breeders' Cup Handicap. This is a grade one quarter of a million dollars on the turf for the older horses. Let's head back down to Florida for the Gulfstream Park Breeders' Cup Handicap. They're off. Demeter is sent for the front, and so is Navasink River. Nigon is at the rail, and Quest Star is three deep. And now Demeter and Nigon will set the pace jointly. Prince Arch and... Rio Guapori are next, and then at the rail, Swagger Stick and Gili, followed by Mustanfar, and the early trailer is Macaw. Long shot Nigon takes them to the top of the stretch the first time, and he has opened up now on Demeter in second. It is Nigon, two and a half length in front. 
Quest Star is going to run up into second with Demeter at tracking third and Host is between horses with Prince Arch at the rail. Then comes Yuli. He's mid-pack and about five from the front. Navasink River's outside of him and Swagger Sticks at the rail. Rio Guafori has two beat. They are Mostin Far and Macaw as they pass the stands for the first time and it is Nigon, but now his lead is just a neck as both Demeter and Quest Star come to take him on at the clubhouse turn. Robert Landry and Nigon now lead three quarters of a length. Demeter is second by a length and a quarter. Prince Arch gets a good tracking spot. Host is between horses and Quest Star is three deep. Navasink River is mid-pack and he's about five from the front and he's a length in front of both Swagger Stick and Gili. Then comes to the outside, Mustin Far. He's got seven lengths to make up. Now guided to the center of the course by Santos. Mustin Far still under a snug hold. Rio Guapori is second to last, and Macaws at the back of the pack as they quicken up the back stretch. In the 20th running of the Gulfstream Park Breeders' Cup handicap, Nigon trying to go it all the way. He's a neck in front of Demeter in second. Quest Star in striking position, third. Prince Arches at the rail for it. To the outside, Navasink River within three and a half of the lead. Host is between horses. Mustan Far is moving up now. He's got five lengths to make up. Then comes Gili and Swagger Stick, Macaw and Rio Guapari, and they run to the top of the stretch. Demeter and Nigon are one, two. Mustan Far is very wide, but he's got momentum. Here comes Mustan Far within three of the lead, and Demeter has taken over the lead. Nigon battles on at the rail. Swagger Stick between horses to the outside. Mustan Far and Prince Arch. Demeter has the lead. Prince Arch trying to gun him down on the money. Mustan Far no better than third. Swagger Stick at the rail to the outside. Prince Arch. Prince Arch and Gili. Prince Arch to pull off a bit of an upset last year over Kitten's Joy, so no shock to see this guy heading back into the winner's circle. He just got there by a nose over the older Gilly Mustenfar, the favorite in the field at just over even money. Settling for third, but not a badly beaten third, as his usual off-the-pace rallying move carried him five wide. He lost just a little bit of ground under Jose Santos, making it into, the, into contention. The winner, Prince Arch, who is now considered a possible contender for, uh, for Dubai at the end of the month, is a bay son of four-year-old son of Arch from Princess Chris by Chris, bred in Kentucky by Pine Lake Bloodstock and owned by Raymond Cottrell Sr., trained by Ken McPeak and ridden to victory by Brice Blanc. Prince Arch covers the mile in three eighths on the turf in 211 and two. We're going to pause now for a brief message, and when we return, we'll be taking a look at racing action from Tampa Bay, Laurel, and Oaklawn. Please stay with us. And finally, in sports tonight, billboards in Kentucky, welcoming you to the horse capital of the world, New York. How's that? Well, it's a marketing campaign to get Kentuckians to rally behind their horse industry. Folks down in the bluegrass must be getting a little worried, a little squeamish, a little verklempt over the incredible achievements of thoroughbreds bred right here in New York. Hey, don't worry, Kentucky. At least you still have a derby. The New York Breeding and Racing Program just keeps getting bigger and better. In 2005, registered New York breds will compete for a record $45 million in purses and incentives. And speaking of records, last year, New York breds won 40 open stakes including Funny Side in the Grade 1 Jockey Club Gold Cup. Funny Side has won! People from all walks of life, from all sports, are getting with the program. Shouldn't you? Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now in South Florida, this time the other side of the state, Tampa Bay Downs. On Saturday, they ran the wayward last for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares at a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head down to Tampa Bay and the running of the wayward last. And they're off. Coach Song Bobble slightly leaving the gate. Away and running. Grab bag reaching up for their lead. And there goes Double Scoop second. Slew's final answer is toward the rail. And the late running romance and Dixie the last horse away. To the clubhouse turn they go. Double Scoop has the lead. Grab bag moves up on the outside second. Coach Song after stumbling at the start. Ranging up on the outside and now going up to challenge. Two lengths farther back, Slew's final answer. Settles in nicely down along the inner rail under T.D. Houghton, racing along fourth, about three lengths off the leaders. De Beer is there fifth, Lady in a Red Dress sixth. Then we go back to Joyful Ballad and Romance, and Dixie is the trainer. Up the back stretch, double scoop, has the lead by a neck, and Coach Song moves up on the outside second. Slew's final answer is now on the prowl, third with Grab Bag on the outside, now racing along fourth. Joyful Ballad is now racing along fifth up on the outside. Lady in a red dress now sixth. 
as they swing around the far turn. It's double scoop with the lead and Coach Sung on the outside. Slew's final answer moves through with a ground saving trip and now going to the lead. Joyful Ballad is now unwinding up on the outside as they turn into the stretch. It's Slew's final answer with the lead. Joyful Ballad is absolutely into the bit and moves to the outside and runs at the leader. They're into the stretch. Here comes locally based Joyful Ballad on the outside. Slew's final answer is toward the rail. It'll be one of these two and Joyful Ballad is going the better of the two. Slew's final answer along the rail. Joyful Ballad in front and going away to take the wayward loss under Jose Lascano by two. Slew's final answer second. Grab bag at Easton third. Running time on the board 144 and three. Local Philly Joyful Ballad pulling off the upset victory here over the favored Slew's final answer, who run, did run on well through the drive. Grab Bag, who had been victorious in her previous start there at Tampa Bay, chasing the early pace from a wide position, fanned wide at the top of the stretch and could do no better than third. The winner, Joyful Ballad, a dark bay or brown five-year-old daughter of St. Bellato from Bring Me Joy by Deputy Minister, was bred in Florida by Glen Hill Farm, owned by the breeder and trained by Thomas Proctor. Written to victory by Jose Lescano. Joyful Ballad covers the mile in the 16th at Tampa Bay in 144 and 3. We're going to head to Oak Lawn Park next, where on Saturday they're in the Mountain Valley Stakes for three year olds sprinting six furlongs for a $50,000 purse. This race came up a minor affair until Thursday afternoon when it was announced that a Fleet Alex, instead of working a mile, was actually going to enter this race. It became a much more interesting event at that point. Let's head down to Oak Lawn and the running of the Mountain Valley. And they're off in the Mountain Valley. And smoke, smoke, smoke explodes for the lead between horses razors right there at the rail Rocky River. Another length further back at the inside is Dr. Meatball, followed by Sir Laffalot. A fleet Alex is at the back of the pack as they move down the back stretch. Burning up the pace now is Razor and Rocky River, and those two are flying down the back stretch with the lead smoke, smoke, smoke in third. At the rail, it's Dr. Meatball. A fleet Alex is past Sir Laffalot now as they head for the turn. The opening quarter very fast, 21 and 3. Rocky River at the rail, Razor alongside, those two cutting out the fractions. It's four lengths back to Smoke, 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 a fleet Alex to the outside in fourth. Then dropping back is Dr. Meatball. And here they come into the stretch of the Mountain Valley. Razor leads it by two and a half, but on the outside, here he comes. It's a fleet Alex under a full head of steam, moves up into second. Razor's got the lead. A fleet Alex now moving up alongside of him with Jeremy Rose. It's two back to Smoke, Smoke, Smoke. A furlong out, and it is a fleet Alex who goes up alongside of Razor and now is going to move on by. A fleet Alex and Jeremy Rose going on to an impressive win in the Mountain Valley and on to the Rebel. A fleet Alex wins it by two and a half. Razor finishing second. Smoke, Smoke, Smoke was third. The six furlongs reached in a minute, nine and two-fifths seconds. And a fleet Alex did get that victory here, ending up drawing off by an official two and three quarter lengths. He got up beside Razor, who did give him a little bit of a challenge. Razor was uh, fairly game there, also uh, bearing out just a little bit, perhaps taking a fleet Alex path just, a, just a, for a momentary step. But uh, a fleet Alex clearly cruising by this field. Razor picking up the second spot. Smoke, 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 settling for third at 19 to 1. The winner of Fleet Alex, by the way, might be worth noting that he did drift, according to the Equibase chart, drifting slightly under steady handling driving, galloped out seven furlongs in 122 and three, galloped out a mile in 139, as was indicated that he would do ahead of time. A Fleet Alex is a Bay three-year-old son of Northern Fleet from Maggie Hawk by Hawkster, bred in Florida by John Martin Silvertand, owned by Cash's King Limited and trained by Tim Ritchie. Written to victory once more by, a, by Jeremy Rose, a fleet Alex covers the six furlongs at Oaklawn in 109 and two. We're gonna head to Laurel next in Maryland and the running of the Horatius Stakes for three-year-olds going six furlongs. Let's head to Maryland and the running of the Horatius. And they're off. 
Diamond Wildcat immediately to the front. Daddy Joe breaks well. Timely impulses up close. Here's Distinctive Trick from the inside gate. Hoist away is only three off the lead. Monster Chaser in B-Trick and Mr. Clive in his last. The speed of Diamond Wildcat clears off by a length and a half. It's Distinctive Trick just holding down second at this point. In between horses, Hoist away is ridden along. Timely impulses in that second group as runners as well as they uh, push on for the far turn. Down at the fence trying to get through there is Mr. Clive. And this long shot moves up boldly into the third spot. Timely Impulse drops back a bit. Daddy Joe on the outside. Monster Chaser hoist away suddenly backs out and beat Trick at the back of the pack. They're at the 560s. Diamond Wildcat and Pino take him there. Distinctive Trick. A big race from Mr. Clive in third. Monster Chaser then back to Daddy Joe. Timely Impulse. No. They're at the top of the stretch. Diamond Wildcat still there and strong. Diamond Wildcat at the 360s pole opens up two and a half lengths. Distinctive Trick is second. Then Monster Chaser along for third. Daddy Joe. Mr. Clive on his run big but not big enough to catch Diamond Wildcat. Diamond Wildcat with a 16th to go in the Horatius solid and pulling away to open up six at the finish. Diamond Wildcat distinctive trick second monster chaser and Daddy Joe. Diamond Wildcat Mario Pino turning the tables on distinctive trick and picking up the victory here by a romping eight lengths out of the starting gate. Uh, he came a little bit of a stumble at the break, but he was right into stride immediately thereafter, never looking back, kicking clear by eight over distinctive trick off of a nice victory in the Capicella. Monster Chaser did chase early and rallied into the third spot at six to one. The winner, Diamond Wildcat, a dark bay or brown three-year-old son of Forest Wildcat from Diamonds and Legs by Quiet American, was bred in Kentucky by the New Farm. He's owned by the breeder, trained by Ben Perkins Jr., and ridden to victory by Mario Pino. Diamond Wildcat covers the six furlongs at Laurel in 111 and 4. We're going to head back into three-year-old competition once again at Turfway Park, this time the John Battaglia Memorial, $100,000 mile and a 16th for the three-year-olds. Let's head down to Turfway in the running of the Battaglia. And they're off. Magna Graduate breaks sharply for the lead. The inside, that's Pavo. Quickly up on the outside, Ultimate. Moving through from the rail, Western Bulldog as they move into the first turn. Ultimate on the outside. On the inside, Western Bulldog between those two, Magna Graduate. Then it's a gap of four. Pavo is now fourth. From the outside, Jorinda Forest runs fifth. It's six lengths back to Malibu Moonshine, Cat Shaker, then Interline, and a big gap to the trailer, Smart Voyager. 23 flat for the opening quarter, and Ultimate has opened a two-length lead. Magna Graduate runs second. From the rail, Western Bulldog now third a length. Pavo is fourth, gap of two. Jorinda Forest now fifth, Cat Shaker next, then Malibu Moonshine, followed by Interline and a big gap back to the Philly Smart Voyager. Into the turn, Ultimate still there by a length. Now gaining ground on the outside, Magna Graduate. Those two together, gap of four. Pavo runs a third, Cat Shaker is fourth, Interline now takes fifth, Malibu Moonshine sixth, it's Magna Graduate who moves by and gets the lead into the stretch. Ultimate on the rail second, gaining ground, Pavo from the outside third, Cat Shaker moves up fourth. In the final furlong, Magna Graduate now draws away Magna Graduate and Pavo, Magna Graduate, impressive, wins by almost five. Pavo second, then it's a photo for third, Ultimate and Malibu Moonshine. Magna graduate Dean Sarvis getting the victory here. This guy had been facing some of the better graded stakes company in his, uh, in his generation. With some success, he came back with a disappointing performance last time out, dropped a little bit in class, and picked up a three to one, three plus length victory over Pavo with the favorite ultimate back in the third spot after setting the pace in the early, in the early going. The winner, Magna Graduate, is a dark Bayer Brown three-year-old son of honor grades from Peacock Alley by Fast Play. He was bred in Kentucky by Nicole Zitani and Raymond Rangel, or I'm sorry, Ramon Rangel, owned by Elizabeth Alexander and trained by Pat Byrne. Ridden to victory by Dean Sarvis, Magna Graduate covers the mile in a 16th at Turfway in 143 and 4. We are going to pause now for one more brief message, and when we return, we'll be taking a look at stakes racing action from Santa Anita and heading home to New York. Please stay tuned.
supporting NTRA charities and its affiliates, you help horses stay safe and healthy before, during, and after their racing careers. You help the people and the communities that are home to NTRA member tracks and farms. And you help Ronald McDonald House charities worldwide. NTRA charities serving our community and yours. disabilities are finding new freedom through horseback riding. For more information on programs and centers near you, contact NARA at 1-800-369-RIDE. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now with stakes racing action from California, beginning with the Santa Catalina for three-year-olds on Saturday. Terrific race, a grade two event with the return to the races of the reigning champion of the division, Declan's Moon. Let's head to California and Trevor's call of the Santa Catalina. And away they go. Declan's Moon broke away well, but stowed at Spanish Chestnut, and Spanish Chestnut wants the lead, and he sprints away. Declan's Moon relaxing very nicely, though. He's just tucking into second. Along the inside is Julie Sugar Daddy, going wild now, taking a hold, and he's moving up between horses. Declan's Moon is forced wide into the turn now. Then back to go. Coyote Joe's back second last, and Snack is trailing. Seven lengths would cover the lot. Past the three-quarter pole they go, and Spanish Chestnut has a hold of the bit now, and he's strong out here. He goes along, leading at a length and three-quarters. Declan's Moon still nice and relaxed on the outside, going wild in the white blinkers down at the rail, and Julie Sugar Daddy now coming to turn the pressure on from the four spot. Then a gap of five lengths further back to go Coyote Joe, and Snack is last. He's now giving them nine-length start. Past the half mile in the Santa Catalina and it's Spanish Chestnut still showing the way just over a length. Declan's Moon biding his time on the outside. Going wild right there down at the rail. Julie Sugar Daddy now the first one to be asked to pick it up. Go Coyote Joe and Snack is eased. Number two Snack has been eased going to the three eighths. The rest of them pass the 5 sixteenths and going wild slips through on the inside of Spanish Chestnut. But Spanish Chestnut far from done. He kicks on. Declan's Moon on the outside. These three line up. We've got a horse race on our hands here. Spanish Chestnut and Gary Stevens between them. Declan's Moon and Victor Espinosa grandstand side. Going wild and Rafael Bajardo on the inside. Three of them head and head. Now Declan's Moon's a Cersei superiority. He strikes the front and he goes for home. And Declan's Moon has put them away in the Santa Catalina and Declan's Moon could not have been more impressive wins it with his ears prick going wild second then Spanish Chestnut go Coyote Joe and Julie Sugar Daddy finish last getting the victory here very impressively sitting off the pace stool that was anticipated between going wild and Spanish Chestnut they didn't go all that fast but they were locked in a fairly solid battle throughout a good portion of a Declan's Moon sweeping to the outside, getting a couple of pops from uh, Victor Espinosa just to keep his mind on his business and make sure that uh, he got out of the race what he needed as this guy will be heading into Triple Crown competition with only two starts under his belt when he approaches the Derby. Declan's Moon, very impressive in return, going wild, holding on well to settle for second, third going to Spanish Chestnut, both of those two coming out of victories in Stakes Company out in California. So clearly Declan's Moon facing a pretty solid group despite the short field in this running of the Santa Catalina. Declan's Moon is a dark bay or brown, gelded son of Malibu Moon from VV Star by Norquester. He was bred in Maryland by Bryce Ridgely. He's owned by the JMS Stable, trained by Ron Ellis, and ridden to victory by Victor Espinosa. Champion Declan's Moon remains undefeated with his victory in the Santa Catalina and a final time of 142 and 2. We're going to head back to three-year-old competition now out in California with the off-the-turf Baldwin. This was scheduled to go six and a half furlongs on the downhill turf course. They did take it off the turf. I do have to presume that it was because of the condition of the uh, hillside at, San, at Santa Anita on Saturday after all of the recent rains. The six and a half furlong Baldwin now going on the main track for three-year-olds. Let's head back to California and Trevor's call. The Baldwin stakes. And away they go. He's a bully, stumbled at the start, but recovered quickly. 
High standards as quick as in a stride along the inside, run through the sun. Bushwhacker at the rail third. He's a bully on the outside of that. And Chantreuse extreme outside, two and a half off these leaders. Then a gap of four back to talking to John. And at the back, the pheasant flyer giving them nine length start. They run to the half mile pole and bushwhacker and run through the sun and they're absolutely flying. Couldn't be going any quicker out here. Length and a half to high standards in third. In behind that, he's a bully. Chantreuse is very comfortable in fifth. He's five off the leaders. Then a big gap of six back to talking to John and the pheasant flyer. Past the three eights they go and run through the sun on the outside. Bushwhacker now losing ground at the rail. Here comes High Standards to take them on and High Standards second and coming after them. In behind that we have He's a Bully. Sean True did not go on today. Suddenly Sean True's far back and battling. They come to the top of the lane now and run through the sun. High Standards on the outside. The Pheasant Flyer and talking to John are running on late as well. Run through the sun and High Standards. They weary on the lead but they still well clear. On the outside, the Pheasant Flyer and talking to John, but High Standards now bursts away, and High Standards will take the Baldwin Stakes. High Standards wins it by two and a half in the end, close for second, runs through the sun, talking to John. The Pheasant Flyer finish for High Standards and Edgar Prado getting the victory here. Edgar obviously along for the ride with uh, St. Liam, but picking up a couple, of other, uh, a couple of other victories on the card here on the undefeated High Standards. A nice two and a half length victory over Talking to John. Run through the sun, only a nose behind in the third spot. Favorite in the field was Chan True. A very good early two-year-old last year, returning off of the long layoff. Not an easy spot to come back against a fairly competitive group of horses, and uh, obviously he had never really run quite as fast as some of these horses. Although obviously one might have expected him to move forward from the year from his two-year-old season into his three-year-old season. The winner, High Standards, is a chestnut three-year-old gelding, a son of High Bright from Tomato Paste by Torsion. Bred in California by the Harris Farms and owned by the breeder. Trained by Martin Jones and ridden to victory by Edgar Prado. High Standards covers the six and a half furlongs in 116 flat. We're going to continue now with stakes racing action from California in the recently dubbed Grade 1 Frank E. Kilrow Mile. A mile on the turf for the older horses. Let's head back to Santa Anita and the running of the Kilrow. And away they go. All came away smoothly. Sweet return, Singletary in the white cap is away well. The Roy de Swanamar from the inside gate is away quickly too. Buckland Manor in the gold colour is going to have to go a little wide. Cajun Beat dropping in behind them. Musical chimes in the blue colours. Then we come back to Romeo Plus. Meteor Storm is second last and Pellegrino is dropped far back last. They run to the three-quarter pole, sweet return on the outside. Leroy de Sanamo on the inside now takes the lead. They're setting a good pace, a length and a half in front of Singletary. Buckland Manor's now dropped onto the rail, three lengths off the leaders. Then back to Cajun Beat in fifth. Musical chimes is six, giving them five lengths start. Then it's another three lengths further back to Romeo Plus. Meteor Storm inside of that, and Pellegrino is 14 off them. They run to the half mile in the Frankie Kilrow and Leroy de Sanamo in the red at the rail. Sweet return, they head and head, Singletary third. Buckland Manor right there in fourth, just waiting for room now. Then it's two and a half to Cajun Beat. Musical chimes five off them. Three more to Romeo Plus. Inside of that, Meteor Storm and Pellegrino last. They come into the top of the lane now, and it's still that Wada Sanamo, the leader. Sweet return, Singletary. Can Buckland Manor find room? No, it a go. Musical chimes coming strongly in the blue. Cajun beat on the outside. It's wide open. Buckland Manor screaming out for room at the rail. Can Buckland Manor get through? The Wada Sanamo's in front on the extreme outside. Here comes with a late run now is Meteor Storm, but it's Leroy de Sanamo going to win it. Leroy de Sanamo takes the Frankie Kilrow. Buckland Manor was second. Leroy de Sanamo, this guy just continues to run very, very well. Here getting to the lead as uh, is often his running style, although he has proven he can run well from off the pace as well. Getting to the front and never looking back, kicking clear by a length and a brilliant ride by John Court. Without interfering with Buckland Manor, he prevented him from getting through any way. Rene Douglas stuck with the second spot on Buckland Manor. Sweet return, running very well here, pressing the early pace uh, set by Loa de Zanimo and fading to finish third, but not a bad effort, but a tremendous run by Loa de Zanimo under pressure every step of the way on this good turf course. 
the winner, Lewa Dezanamo, is a chestnut five-year-old son of candy stripes from Dissemble by Ahunora. He was bred in Brazil by the Aras Baga de Sul. He is owned by TNT Stud, trained by Bobby Frankel, and ridden to victory by John Court. Le Roi des Animaux covers the mile on a turf course labeled good in 133 and 4. We're going to continue with stakes racing action from California in the $1 million big cap, the race that back in the days of uh, Seabiscuit was known as the 100 grander. Now it's the million dollar grade one Santa Anita handicap. Let's head back to California and Trevor Skull. That for the Santa Anita handicap. And away they go to the roar of the Santa Anita crowd here. Grand Reward was quick into stride. Alongside of that came St. Liam on the outside. Came away well. Truly a judge along the inside. And Lundy's Liability tucked in just behind them. Here's Rock Hard 10. One from the outside joining the Vanguard 2. Congrats as the blue cap racing in just behind them. Super Blitz now taken to the outside. Island Fashion is back third last. Imperialism second last. Gives them nine length start. And the long shot Californian is last. They run past the seven eights pole and truly a judge setting the pace. It's a good one too. He leads it three parts of a length to Grand Reward. The favorite St. Liam in a perfect spot third and Lundy's liability down at the rail fourth. Only two and a half off those leaders. Here's Rock Hard 10 racing on his own. He's fifth. He's giving them six length start. In behind those two comes Borrego. Super Blitz on the outside of him. Congrats is in the white colors giving them eight length start. Two more to Island Fashion. Imperial Imperialism up alongside of her and California and last. They go to the half mile in the big cap and it's still truly a judge showing the way. Grand Reward is right there second. St. Liam been very patiently ridden in the pink colors third. Lundy's liability right there in the fourth spot. Rock Hard 10 is now fifth. He's four lengths off the leaders. Congrats on the outside then Borrego, Super Blitz, Island Fashion, Imperialism, nine off them and California and last. They turn the pressure on in the big cap now. Truly a judge can find no more. Grand and reward the new leader, Rock Hard 10. St. Liam now comes under a ride, and St. Liam in the pink colour's got to pick it up. Congrats is on the outside. Imperialism tries to get involved late. Homeward bound in the big one, Grand Reward. Here's Rock Hard 10, and Rock Hard 10 just being punched along. Here comes Congrats on the outside, but Rock Hard 10 strikes the front, chased home by Congrats. But this is the real Rock Hard 10, and Rock Hard 10 wins the big cap from Congrats. That's close for third between Borrego and Grand Reward. Then came Lundy's liability. Rock Hard 10, as you heard, the real Rock Hard 10, as you heard Trevor call him under the wire. This guy can uh, can be a little bit frustrating. He's certainly a talented horse, although this year he seems to have started to really put it together. It's a very large colt, maybe took a little bit of extra time to grow into himself, but Gary Stevens seems to know him well. Kept him just off the pace rather than letting him lag behind made that sweeping move, held congrats at bay by a length and three quarters for a 1-2 victory here. Richard Mandela in the top two spots. Borrego ending up making a big move to get up for the third spot uh, as a bit of a long shot at 25 to 1. Of course, very disappointing in this race with St. Liam heading out off of an impressive victory in the Don Handicap. He was the favorite at just over even money. Breaking from the outside post position, not the easiest place to break. He did have a long run to get into position Position, but he was forced about four wide on the first turn and we know how dangerous it can be to be caught wide coming up a bit flat and uh, as they entered the uh, entered the final furlong or so Edgar Prado kind of easing him up a little obviously not continuing to persevere with a horse who was clearly beaten. The winner, Rock Hard 10, is a four-year-old Dark Bayer Brown son of Chris S. from Tursa by Mr. Prospector. He was bred in Kentucky by Madeline Paulson, owned by Mercedes Stable and Madeline Paulson, trained by Richard Mandela, ridden to victory by regular rider Gary Stevens. Rock Hard 10 covers the mile and a quarter at Santa Anita in 201 and 1. More stakes racing action on Sunday from Santa Anita. We're going to take a look next at the La Habra for three-year-old fillies going five or going six and a half furlongs on the downhill turf course, which apparently had been cleared up a little bit by Sunday afternoon's racing. Let's head back to California and the running of La Habra. Well, that. Oh, where they go? Barbatum was off a little awkwardly. 
No Bull Baby on the far side very fast. Up alongside of that comes Kohar. Inside of them is Coastal Strike. And now Barbatum quickly recovered and sprints through on the inside to be fourth. Then it's Royal Wave revealed as on the outside. Here we have Shining Energy in the red colors. Now six lengths off those leaders. Three back to Cash Clip and Royal Copenhagen is 11 off them. They have a half mile left to go and Kohar has gone clear by two. Royal Wave coming through on the inside of Coastal Strike. No Bull Baby is there, a joint second. Now here's Shining Energy. She's keen to go on in the red colors. Got a wall of horses in front of her, but Shining Energy wants to go on. Revealed is on the outside of her. Then we come back to Barbatum, who's lost a bit of ground. Outside of that, Cash Clip and Royal Copenhagen is nine off them. They come into the top of the lane, Kohar, Royal Wave just leapt over the grass there, but comes on at them. Just in behind the leaders is Shining Energy in the red, now finding somewhere to run. Coastal Strike, No Bull Baby and Revealed. They come for home and Shining Energy now has room and here she comes bursting forward in the red colours now. And it's Shining Energy being very confidently ridden on the outside, No Bull Baby. But a very, very impressive win by Shining Energy. She romps in the La Habra. Second will be Kohar, Barbatum flew late to be in a photo with Royal Way. Shining Energy and Renee Douglas here he gets that turf victory that was so elusive the day before in the Kilroy Mile from off the pace after being aggressive in the early going she settled down to end up victory end up with a victory by two and three quarter lengths as the favorite over 31 to one outsider Kohar who did set the pace and held on for second we had a dead heat for the third spot between Royal Wave and Burbatum, both of them at 10 to 1. It was the heavy favorite Shining Energy and several others uh, in single digits all running off the board. The winner, Shining Energy, is a chestnut three-year-old daughter of Rahi from Miss Universal by Lysias. He was bred, she was bred in Kentucky by Norman Cheng and Tony Feng, owned by... Terence Lanny, J. Terence Lanny and Bernard Schapa, trained by Julio Canani and ridden to victory by Renee Douglas. Shining Energy covers the six and a half furlongs in 113 and three. That's the end of California for a busy weekend. We have one other stakes race, of course, that from New York on Saturday. The stakes feature the, the Stymie Handicap, $75,000, nine furlongs for older horses. Let's head down to New York in the call of the Stymie. Racing in the 50th running of the Stymie. Agadon started very well, and so did Halo Malone, who comes through on the inside to take the lead, and he'll set the pace. Agadon is second while far off from the rail. Then it's Song of the Sword, Hydrogen to the inside, and Country Be Gold is last early, five lengths off the lead. The pace appears to be very slow here, as Stuart Elliott and Halo Malone lead the way. Halo Malone in front by a length and a half. Song of the Sword on the outside, second, Hydrogen, third, Agadon caught three wide on the first turn, in fourth, two and a half lengths off the lead, and Country Be Gold is just four behind, front running Halo Malone, who ran a quarter in 24 and two. Halo Malone onto the back stretch, nearly a length in front. Song of the Sword, Agadon, and Hydrogen all lined up behind him, and they're two clear of Country Be Gold, who will have to come from last. He is five lengths off the lead. They ran a half in 49 and two. Halo Malone just coasting along on the backstretch in the stymie. He set a slow pace so far and leads by almost a length with a half mile to go. Song of the Sword second, Hydrogen third at the rail, Agadon yet to be let loose in fourth. He's still three off the lead and the trailer is Country B Gold. Around the far turn, Halo Malone a half length over Song of the Sword. They went three quarters in one, 14 and one and here comes Agadon now. He is gaining ground outside of the leaders. Hydrogen's not out of it yet. Hydrogen's only two and a half behind, and they're into the stretch. Halo Malone coming down the lane in front. Song of the Sword to the outside, Agadon. Hydrogen trying to find some running room between horses. He's still in with a shot if he gets through, and he did, and here comes Hydrogen now. On the outside, Agadon. Hydrogen down toward the rail. Song of the Sword, Agadon, and Hydrogen head and head coming to the wire in the stymie. Here's the finish. Hydrogen won it by a nose. Agadon was second, and then Song of the Sword. Hydrogen and just getting up there under a tremendous ride by Richie Migliori, sneaking through between horses, pulling him off the rail, and just getting there to beat Agadan, who is not an easy horse to defeat. Agadan, pretty game when he gets himself into a tussle, but Hydrogen wanted it just that bit more, and Richie Migliori got him through to a victory over Hy Agadan with Song of the Sword. Back in the third spot, this guy loves this racetrack, but this was not his best performance over this venue. 
The winner, Hydrogen, is a six-year-old bay son of Pleasant Colony from Novel Encounter by Woodman. He was bred in Kentucky by Joanne H. Knorr, owned by Earl Mack, and trained by Bruce Levine. Written to victory by Richie Migliori. Hydrogen covers the nine furlongs at the Big A in 150 and four. That's going to wrap up a busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you very much for joining us this week. We hope you'll be able to join us once again as we take a look next week on Horses and Courses at Racing Action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.